like to really welcome you in this webinar. And I'm really excited actually to have this special guest with us today. His name is Alex Spiroglu. He's a Greek fella as well. <laughs> and I'm really, really excited about this webinar because Alex is an exceptional, not only at, as a trader, but also very interesting personality. Now, Alex, thank you so much for make us this honor to be on this uh, webinar. Thank you for the invitation, Dale. It's a, it's a real pleasure and an honor to be uh, here with you. Thank you so much. So just allow me to make um, a brief introduction and thank introduce you. you to our guest. Uh, by the way, guys, please use the chat to communicate with, uh, with us here. And before we start, as usual, our risk warning, just to make it clear that this content is used only for education and general purposes and uh, under no point it considered as a personal advice or any kind of financial uh, or business recommendation. And thank you so much for your understanding. <laughs> now, about Alex. Alex, it's a quasi-systematic across asset proprietary futures trader. His involvement with uh, capital markets began ages ago, <laughs> as you can read on the screen. Having worked for various proprietary trading and investment management firms in the UK and Greece, he's currently trading his own book. He will tell you himself more about that. And he's active in all major liquid future markets across all major asset classes. That's equity, interest rates, commodities, foreign exchange. And of course, he's enjoying himself and his family uh, with the most uh, amazing cat in the world. And the name is Greco, and I'm not that surprised <laughs> by the name, by the beautiful coast of South East England. Alex. <laughs> Theo, thank you so much for the uh, introduction. And it's a pleasure to be here with you. And I hope we can have a chat that will be uh, uh, interesting to the audience. Oh, absolutely. I'm sure about that. Um, just to keep something before we uh, we move on, there are people already asked uh, because, you know, in this uh, webinar, we have traders that they maybe just started or they trade for three, for six months, for one year. So they come from kind of different um, backgrounds. Backgrounds, yeah. So they are. Uh, they ask what what are the major liquid uh, future markets, and if you explain us along the way um, the difference between equity, interest rates, and how do you trade them. Most of them are familiar on how to trade CFDs with the forex. Uh, that's the the pairs, the currency pairs, of course, and commodities like gold, like WTI, Cooper and uh, so on okay absolutely and as for the today's agenda of course we're going to go we're going to spend most of the times interviewing alex okay he will explain us his approach um some major um steps into his career and we're going to leave uh, some time at the end depends on the questions they're going to come in to answer hopefully all the questions all right so any question come in your mind please instantly put them on the chat so i can collect them and understand how much time we're going to leave at the end to answer all your questions all right guys and for now that's all so alex uh let's start with uh, with saying first, first, I would like to say congratulations because recently in 2022, if I'm correct, you won uh, two awards, right? That about the multi volatility uh, normalized momentum. Yes, absolutely. Is that correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? Yeah, sure. Well, um, basically in uh, 2022, um, as you mentioned, I won two awards. One, the first one's the Charles Dow uh, Award, administered okay. by the um, Chartered Market Technicians Association. Yes. 
Um, it's the largest technical analysis uh, association globally, and they host um, um, a competition, if you will, for the best uh, trading paper, um, research paper. And I think probably 20 or 25 people have won this award globally. And um, I submitted the paper to them called MACTV, a Volatility Normalized Momentum. Basically, yeah. I took the MACTV and I made some uh, new techniques and tools uh, on it. Um, and also submitted the paper to the National Association of Active Investment Managers. And I was awarded the Founders Award. So I won that award as well in 2002. So I think it was a, uh, it was an interesting paper. Perhaps we can, you know, go to more detail into about it uh, some other time. Okay, absolutely. So uh, can someone apply what you your methodology and your strategy as a um, retail trader? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, it can be. Uh, it's and it can be because what I do, I try to keep it on a basis of being uh, simple and systematic. Okay. Um, my awesome. technique. Yes, my my techniques are came from the need to follow a procedure to be rules based. Okay. So in order, yeah, I'm, I don't know. I, I like. I mean, it's it's in it's my mentality to have clarity, and yes. I think this clarity um helps you create discipline yes and that was one of the mains basically have uh rules based discipline and uh that based on that discipline i could also create um a framework upon yes. which to be repeatable and about these repetitions to build confidence because i be in having um repetition based comp uh, confidence awesome awesome so, um, is it true that we say, your opinion, when we say that the more systematic you are and the more structure plan you have on trading, pre-trading and why trading, when you have rules, the less emotional you become? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because the, uh, the, one of the benefits of being systematic, and, uh, and let me clarify, when I systematic, I don't necessarily mean fully automated. Okay. But, but because there is a wide range of um of how systematic it can be. One can, for example, make fully discretionary, one can be fully automated, or you can be somewhere in the middle, be semi-systematic or rules-based, such as I am, which means you have a framework of rules that you follow, mm -hmm. and you can put some um discretion around them in certain parts to it so you can try to have ideally the best of two worlds so mm. to come back to your question yes i absolutely believe wholeheartedly that um if you have a framework a procedure a blueprint uh, a set of rules to follow um the the more chances of success you had because whatever you did um if you did it right it it can be reproduced it can be repeatable and Absolutely. If, you, if, you, if it's wrong, then you can attribute it and say you can try to correct it. You have so you can have processes, uh, checklists, frameworks, and you can see that not just in um, in trading, but also in businesses. For example, um, you know, take McDonald's. I mean, if anyone tried to open a franchise or you know, see how it, basically an operation like that, you know, they they give you they give you a whole book. You know, um, so that's the difference between if you um, if you and I try to open a, a burger restaurant or have a McDonald's, McDonald's will, would give us a set of procedures, checklists, how to do with personnel, how to do with the kitchen, how to do the servicing. So there would be a cool framework, a system. Oh. So that's why it was able to expand so much and be repeatable because they would take their frameworks, which of course they would update and spread them across the world and, you know, basically expand the business. Wow. I love this paradigm you just gave because uh, at some point traders uh, I believe they don't understand why they have to have a structure plan at least as you uh, describe it a semi-systematic approach and not just be discretionary I mean discretionary it's uh, it leads to a howdy um, um, a howdy in inside the markets 
That's right. Yep. It's like Absolutely. you see the one hour time frame and it shows you an uptrend and you see the five minute and it shows you a sideways. You see the one minute, it shows you a downtrend. And then they come and they say, oh, what's going on? What should I do? Is it an uptrend, a downtrend, a sideways? But based on your uh, your approach, you make it very clear that you are looking for specific things. Is that right? Yeah, that's true. That's right. I think to tell you the truth, one of the problems also um, uh, today's, I mean, traders that to try to start is that they have too much information and information is not knowledge. Um, yes. I, could, I, had the, I had the pleasure of uh, meeting and also talking with technicians, legendary technicians like uh, Tom DeMarc, John Bollinger, especially my friend Larry Williams. They lived in a different era. They're, 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 yeah. They had a different set of problems. Their problems at that time were there wasn't so much information out there. I mean, they even had to collect data themselves, create their own trading chart. So it was, it had to be, it had to be someone really dedicated to mm -hmm. proceed in this. Now we live in a different era, uh, which a lot of people will even understand these problems because you can go into, for example, an application sort of like a the trading view and log in and you've got all the data in the world. And then you go to the uh, script section and you've got 5,000 indicators. But that also has created the problem because you've got so much information yep. and it's like drinking off of a higher fire hose. And sometimes as I jokingly say, and people nowadays suffer from trading ADHD. It's yeah. difficult to focus on their attention on one thing and learn what is most important and also how to structure it in a in a in a step by step fashion. Absolutely, um, I'm very uh, very happy that you you mentioned this thing. Um, so, uh, if if may I ask you? You let's talk a little bit about your technical analysis. All right. So, uh, from I was about to ask you that if you find technical analysis to be the significant part of your activity, or if you are also looking fundamentals and combine, uh, can you just clarify a little bit about your technical analysis approach and how much of significant? Is in yes. your trading activity. Yes. Well, technical analysis is uh, important, but it's only a part of the picture. And I say part of the picture because fundamentally it answers different questions than fundamental analysis. Okay. The, uh, technical analysis is more like um, the when. Fundamental analysis is more like the why. Okay. You what I'll be putting okay. it into broad, very broad category. So I do use technical analysis, but as a timing overlay. And I use macro analysis as a selection tool to give me mm -hmm. uh, a directional bias. So if you want, if, if I want to pick which market I want to trade, I need to know why I would be doing this. And that is okay. purely a fundamental question because trends, which of course we examine uh, technically, but they, the underlying roots are fundamental. Awesome. Also, I try to combine these in a in a rules based framework. Okay. Also, can you give us an example to make it more, let's say, more understandable? Uh, because now that's what you said. I believe it's an answer to many questions that are supposed to come. So, um, if you have something uh, out of your head. Can you give us just yep. an example or maybe a trade that you took recently or something? Absolutely. Well, absolutely. Well, the, well, the my my whole uh, the combination of technical and fundamental analysis. Well, well, to try to do is I'm I'm trying to give something that's a bit more uh, evergreen in the sense that okay. um, rather than go say okay I'm a bit uh, bearish of the S and P 500 or Nasdaq rather than this which may or may not be correct but also even if it is correct it will last um, no more than a few days or weeks what I'll try to do is patch my general framework which you people are more than happy for people to keep well my hope it's it's a basically it's a 12 step process wow so if you want to be seeing it like an uh, like a framework so yeah. the the bottom four steps of the process are my, is my macro uh, my macro background. Now the macro background is is broken in four parts. 
Mm-hmm. It's my it's my on a long held belief uh, that um, each time frame has its own return drivers. By that I mean that each time frame has more of a, of a, of a dominant factor that influences it. For example, if you want to take an approach which is um, monthly, weekly, and daily chart, mm-hmm. you will find that the factors that affect the monthly time frame are different that once on the weekly and that's on the daily. Yes. So what I do, I start from the monthly chart, which I do my what I call, um, see the business cycle. The business cycle can be approached either with economic indicators mm-hmm. or with uh, intermarket or cross-asset relationships. Okay. Uh, a gentleman who's created a very useful framework, so it's, uh, I tried to improve, I made a variation of it, was um, Martin Print, which created a, a six-stage framework for see where the business cycle is. Now, of course, uh, that harkens upon the work of someone called Aries. Um, that was probably almost a century ago. So there, that, that's a, the basic framework. You can also quantify economic indicators. For example, you can take inflation, um, do some mathematical, it doesn't have to be too rigorous, mathematical applications and see how much this affects um, the S&P 500 or equities in general, bond markets, commodities. And that gives you the big picture of where we are in the business cycle, in which stage. The second step is what I go, uh, I see, uh, I go into commitment of traders report. Okay. I'm not sure how many people are um, familiar with it. So just to go very briefly, basically commission sure. of traders report shows the amount of open interest that is open in each futures contract and it breaks it down into uh what it's called the commit uh, the um commercial commercials commercials basically are the companies that have um um use uh, uh pro- use the uh, the commodity for business purposes either as a because they produce it or they use it for example crude oil um Commercials would go under the category of oiling, uh, oil, um, uh, drilling companies, mining companies, or it can be in the sense of um, an airline company who uses fuel as its main uh, what part of doing business. And by analyzing, and also you've got another type of large trader, uh, and also you've got the uh, non-commercials, which are basically funds with by and large, by and large, are trend following in nature. Now, these are the mechanisms. You've got the, the small speculators. So these uh, the these categories also help you to get the big picture, what the big the smart man is going. They won't tell you what each firm individually does, but collectively. Now, that's the second step. The th- of course, uh, I don't want to be oversimplifying it. In each step, there is a, there are a lot of uh, things to be said, but I'm just giving you the basic framework. The sure. third step is going into sentiment. And that's a very, very big uh, part of analysis, showing if how uh, and you can use surveys or positions uh, to see how much institutionals or retail investors are um, feeling uh, and what positions they take, because at the extremes, they usually are very loaded. Uh, okay. And the fourth last step is uh, seasonals and cycles. Now, these four tools help me create a macro picture for for any type of market. It doesn't have to be that all four have to be bullish. Usually they're not. It may be that two are bullish, one is in the gray, and one is bearish. So that's what it becomes an art rather than a science. But Mm -hmm. being rules-based, you go with the weight of the evidence. So that's my macro background. Mm -hmm. Um, Also have a a slide to share. I don't know if that would would help. Sure, Um, sure. Um, let me try to scratch you. Yes, that's the one. Can you see it? Yes. yes Perfect. Sir. All right. So that's that's my big uh, uh, that's my trending plan, which also kind of like framed as a uh, for a, a training path, what I call if something you know, because okay. I I was um I've started to be teaching it to others. So as we mentioned at the bottom part is the business side. Of the, can you see my cursor? Yes. 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 Right. So the business cycle of many, then we proceed to the commitment of traders report, then we go to sentiment and then seasonality. So that's my macro background. Mm-hmm. Again, 
each one, each of these steps has to be rules based and um, with indicators, frameworks, checklists, and so on and so forth. Then I progress to the technicals because once I've got the macro picture, then I have to go into the technicals. Now I've got the trend roadmap, basically seeing what the trend, market structure, um, pattern recognition, and so on and so forth. Um, basically, the trend. Uh, if you wanna liken the uh, uh, like a car, if you wanna go, for example, moving from London to um, south, uh, so from Southampton, you're going south. Obviously, if you're going to Manchester, you're going north. So the direction the, where the car is going is basically your trend, you know, bullish or bearish. Then I go into momentum. Then I go to momentum. With momentum basically is the speed that the car is using because the car may be moving at this direction, but you're going 70 miles or we're going 50 miles. Yeah. Then I see volatility, which is a big, big part because volatility, as my friend John Bollinger mentioned, said uh, once said, uh, low volatility is where trends are born, and high volatility is where they go to die. So it is a very, very good technical setup. And also, you can also use it for risk management. And the fourth is what I call the relative ranker. Basically, so if you've got two cars headed in the right direction, in one direction, for example, going from London to Manchester, they're going north. You may see their speed, but that's the, you know, the momentum is the speedometer. The odometer is relative strength. So one may be halfway the distance, one may already have reached Manchester. So it's always good to see which uh, market has traveled the further, the furthest. And the last part is basically taking all this information and took it into um, a trading setup, which is basically a trading plan, which is basically what I call the 4S framework, setup, signal, size, and stops. Because each trade is comprised of these four parts. No matter how you trade is the setup, basically why you want to be going into this direction, bullish or bearish. Mm -hmm. um, the signal where you actually you know physically get in, the size and the stop. So that's that's my general framework. Wow. Uh, I'll be very honest with you. There are so many questions. I read them on the other monitor I have on my left. And I see uh, Arturo, uh, Kaito, MM, uh, Jose, Leonardo, and all the rest. Uh, guys, I read your questions and... At the end, we're going to try to answer every single one of them, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, there are many questions related to what you just described now, Alex. So we may need to come back to uh, that pattern, okay. step pattern, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, would it be okay to ask you which markets are you trading? Like, uh, yeah, we, we read at the description that you're trading all the liquid markets, but can we be a little bit more specific maybe? Yes, well, basically I look at equity futures, basically both European and US based, um, and also from the uh, um, from, from Asia. FX, I primarily do uh, European again and US, uh, also UK as well. FX, the major crosses, whether in uh, Europe or Australian, Canadian dollar, the commodity dollars. Okay. And now, last but not least, uh, I also do um, commodities. Again, the major ones, but um, you know, gold, crude, or from the soy markets, from the soy complex, shocks. Um, these are all, all markets. These are about like, um, I think it's about 55 markets which are on my monitor. Okay. But... The main, um, I think the main point to highlight is not so many, how many markets are on my radar, mm -hmm. but which I select. So, so the, 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 the answer is in which market I trade is actually the market that is set up, the market that is actually um, more fundamentally tried to make a move, if that makes sense. Okay. Generally, my, my, my um, in order to partition, to have a better view of, uh, the how the economy works and also helps me in my economic framework. I've divided the economy of the the, the, the markets uh, on ten different sectors, depending on which um, 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 part of the economy they respond to. You go equities, you go bonds, uh, then you go commodities like energy, 
Uh, then you've got commodities like precious metals. You've got industrial metals. Um, then you've got effects. Then you've got um, uh, commodities like agriculture. So in general, they can be seven. So with, using the intermarket relationships, these can also help me pinpoint a market that will be trending. Okay, awesome. You know, that will be really interesting. Um, another time to make a webinar and purely see you if you allow us to do that. So yep. to show us on the chart, uh, let's say how your setup and these rules apply uh, and you go through that analysis, the selection, and then the execution. Yeah, of course, of course. Of course. That, that, would be a, uh, that would be a pleasure. And also see, you know, uh, the things I do right, the things I do wrong, and uh, the mistakes I do, how I try to correct them, and, and so on and so forth. Awesome, awesome. So thank you so much for uh, for the for for the clarity. Now, a question: Are you an intraday trader, or do you hold positions overnight? You mentioned something like some weeks. Uh, no, can you please tell us. Yeah, well, well, not my position. Well, I've got basically different uh, strategies, but all of them are based on an end of day basis. I don't do any intraday trading. Okay. And I also don't do a trade individual shares. There are many okay. reasons for it, but uh, I think it's people are best, especially people who are just to begin um, to stay away from intraday trading. Let me put it in uh, in terms of an analogy. Imagine someone who's learning how to, have, uh, trying to drive and you put them in a NASCAR competition. I, I for, and for those who may not um, relate to what NASCAR is, is the driving um, competitions that you go, that the cars go in the US, go in a circle. Uh, or in Ferrari one, if you might not, people might relate, and you go uh, going at such uh, very fast speed, and it really takes someone who is intensely focused and very competent to do that. So I, I try to uh, uh, Set to advise people to stay away from intraday trading. Now, myself, I, I find that I'm much more productive and it suits my personality as well yes. because I'm more analytical rather than reactive. So that's my, my strong suit. So as, as a character, it suits me much, much better to do end of day because I've got time in the world to see my data, you know, think about it again. And if not, I'll go rather than being reactive. So... It doesn't suit my character very well. But there are probably much, much better traders on an intraday basis than me. I'm sure there are. But um, so I try to pick where my uh, my my strong char characteristics are as a as a personality are. Stick with them. Try to leverage them. Okay, that's that's brilliant. That's brilliant because um, I think and we can discuss on that. Many traders they start trading. And they think, and in my opinion, that's not the right mindset, but they think that uh, intraday trading, it's going to create profits and help the account to accumulate faster. Yeah, you get to, basically the idea with intraday trading is that you can spin the wheel more often. <laughs> but the, the, the thing is, I mean, through, well, basically wealth is, is created by taking small positions and holding them for a larger, for a larger time. Now, when I say larger, my usually time, my usual holding time frame is um, anything from three to five days. Okay. So you can see it's like a, it's short term. It, it is short term, uh, but usually three to four, maximum five. Now, there are some other strategies. We, I, we, no, of course, if it goes my way, mm -hmm. I may hold for ten to fifteen days. But these are my sort of like my long-term positions. So you would classify me as a short-term trader, but not in an intraday trader. Okay. The problem with intraday trading is you try to capitalize on the quick reinvestment of your profits. And that's the appeal of it. Uh, that you can, you know, like I mentioned before, you know, you can spin the wheel more often. But, but the issue is that you go a host of problems, sort of like costs, um, noise and so on and so forth. There are a lot of challenges with intraday trading. Plus, it gives people the illusion 
that because you can train on a sm on a smaller time frame, that you can keep your stops closer and thus have a um, trained more contracts or a bigger position if we're talking about CFDs. Yes. yes. And uh, that appeals to the wrong type of people, which is undercapitalized traders. So they say we've got a small pot. I can't have big stops. So how can I make my stops smaller? I'll go to a smaller time frame because yes. that will suit my portfolio. But you shouldn't be picking your time frame based on your portfolio, but rather your uh, your your skill set. Exactly. And uh, I like when you make it clear that the way you approach the market, it's how it suits your personality and how you can... Um, I think many traders, they make the mistake to try to fit themselves into the market instead of fit the market based on uh, who they are as traders, as characters, and so on. I don't know if you... Uh, if you agree with that. Absolutely. No, no, I think you've hit the nail on the head. It's, well, basically, uh, as, as part of um, your your journey to learn and evolve, yes. someone has to first do self-awareness. Actually, yes. to tell you, that there are five, five, five stages to trader development. I call this the, they form the acronym SMART. All right? Okay. So, the first stage of trader because and it's an acronym that's why i call the uh, uh, it's it's a it's a it, this the the five smart stage of trade development the first stage is self-awareness mm -hmm. right so part of that self-awareness you have to is you know realizing what it takes to learn and you know things about your character and how this will come later on um part of the market yep the second is uh market uh, knowledge. So first is learning about yourself. Second is learning about markets. Markets, of course, technicals and fundamentals, what I've shown you before this learning path. Yep. The third one is called an action plan, basically taking these uh, and forming it into a concrete process. Mm -hmm. The fourth stage, the R of the SMART, is repeat and review. And that is probably the most neglected part of the learning process. I have been actually more with you on that. Yeah, every everyone is so focused on the wiggles and waggles of technical analysis, the new indicators. And I'm not saying it in a dismissive way because myself, I've got a couple of awards having created the new indicator. But I'm just telling you that if you go past that in order to, for, um, to, to reach a performance or high performance, however you want to call it, you have to go into, press, uh, into uh, learning how to repeat and review your own trades. And the fifth stage is actually the you know the trading stage, and only then you become a trader. Now, most of the people that I have seen from the non-professional community uh, hardly make it past stage one or stage two, very, very, very rarely. Uh, so that's why they um, they you know you end up with a, what they call a rule of 90, 90% 90 of traders losing 90% of the money in 90 days. Okay. Exactly. So let's go back to your trading setups and your trading. Let's use uh, the, the left over time because I see many questions and I think we will uh, need about maybe 10 minutes to go through all these questions, if no more. So uh, let's go back to your to your trading. All right. Um, I have a question for you. Most of that it's been answered, but... Um, can you give us an example of what an ideal setup may look like uh, if it's easy for you to do it? Um, yeah, absolutely. Verbally. Absolutely. Yeah, we'd be glad to. Um, because I, I'm, I think that many, sorry to interrupt you, that many traders here, they are, based on the questions they ask, I realize they want to understand. Uh, okay, I'll visualize it. Basically, if I if I, if I understand uh, from where you because you're reading because you're reading the questions, obviously, I would say they probably need to visualize it. And the good thing about technical analysis and markets is that it's very visual. But unfortunately, since this is an interview, I haven't come prepared. You know, just just the slide I've shown you. Yes. Uh, well, basically, if you the ideal trade, for example, okay, let me give an example. So, I start off from the weekly chart, and okay. I don't look at technical analysis at all. 
So take, for example, a market that is um, set up. For example, take um, like crude oil. Okay. okay. Now, all right. So what I would do is I would plot crude oil. Now, there are, sorry to interrupt. There are two ways to do it, either on an individual market basis, if you want to check a market or have scanners that give you the criteria and check all markets. So let's take the first yep. uh, scenario where we check a market individually. So what I do is go to the weekly chart. All yes. Right? Um, of course, you know, the first part is seeing the business cycle. Now, I go to the weekly chart and put all the commitment of traders report. And okay. Either the raw data of the commitment of traders report and also indicators. And from that, trying to understand whether there is commercial buying or commercial selling, and if it has reached a point where potentially it can start becoming too much. So, uh, for example, crude oil, it's, it's under heavy accumulation. Yeah. So, but that is not a timing tool. It's not something that I will use and say, okay, this is it, you know, get in. Yep. The second step is... Uh, Check the uh, check, of course, my intermarket relationships, and all. Then the second step is to uh, see sentiment. Now, is crude oil sentiment bearish enough to say that now uh, and that it might warrant a reversal of the trend? Now, why is market sentiment so important? It is very important because if there is too much sentiment in one particular direction. It means that everyone is invested in this particular in this particular um, trend, mm -hmm. and that makes it very susceptible for a to a reversal. Yes, yes. And also the fourth part is to see if it, historically the market is up to making a change in trend or a continuation of its existing trend this time of the year. By that I mean seasonality. There are certain markets which are, uh, of course, there are fundamental reasons behind it um, that have a proclivity to to be to um, to move in a particular direction during the year. Um, I'll just start with the most well-known adage: "Selling may and go away with the uh, with the stock market, which which currently seeing is under pressure right now." But you, but there are more importantly, especially in natural resource markets, in commodity markets, and also in bond markets, and in effects, there are uh, seasonal. So that's also another factor to look at. And um, so once I've done this, then I go into the technicals. Okay. All the all these I mentioned are purely on the weekly chart. Now I may see check the the. Uh, that with the only exceptions, I may see that um, the seasonals on a daily chart as well, but I'm not doing any technical analysis at all. Of course, I'm using charts, but I'm using macro information. Okay, so you don't plot your support, your resistor, no, 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 no. or any type of patterns or candle lines on the weekly chart? Not, not, not at this stage. Not at this okay. stage. The first thing I want to check is uh, my macro, because macros move trend. And I want, what I want to be doing is aligning myself with a trend, with the smart money, the big picture. The, this is the, the yeah, I think this is the, the, the biggest thing one can do to help themselves in, regarding having good entries uh, is align yourself with the trend from a technical point of view and also from a macro. That's, and also help yourself with, uh, and then I'll come in with timing. Okay, so. After that, you go, I assume, to the daily chart to look for yep. execution and technical analysis. Yep, absolutely. Then I go into technical analysis. For example, if I, if I see a market is fundamentally driven uh, for, a, for, a, um, for a bullish move, then I will go to technicals and see um, what's the picture there now. The first thing I will see is what I call market structure. Market structure yeah. is a combination of trend and uh, pattern recognition. Now, the trend itself has eight distinct different stages. Yeah. Because in each time frame, for example, take the daily chart, but you can do it on the intraday chart, monthly, it doesn't matter. So, for example, let's look at the daily chart. Yeah. Long-term, medium, and short-term trends. Yep. 
All right? So if you do the combinations between these, you will find that you have eight different combinations. So for example, the first part is when you've got long-term trend uh, is up, medium trend is up, and short-term trend is down. The second is long-term trend up, medium trend up, and short-term trend also up. So if you do these combinations, you can get like a sine wave. And based on this, I can pigeonhole the market and say it's in stage one, two, three, four. Once I've done that, I try to see the patterns using um, swing charts. Now, they, they sometimes also referred by um, zigzag. The zigzag, okay. I mean, basically, basically it's, an, it's, an, it's, an, it's a way to isolate local mix, uh, maximum and minimum points and see okay. the, do pattern recognition in these. There are, there are a lot of ways to do it. Um, so you are using the line, the line charts. Are you referring to the line charts? Yes, exactly. Okay. So, for example, sometimes call, people call it a zigzag line, mm -hmm. but these zigzags, the, you, you can call pattern recognition. For and, um, I love talking about this, but I don't want to be going too many details. All right, but let me put it another way. If you take the last five swing points, so you have a swing high, swing low, swing high, swing low. You take five different points. Um, there is a finite number of combinations you can have. Now, this is based on the work of Art Merrill. Um, you, there's a finite number of combinations you can have. Based on these combinations, you can start studying the performance of the market. So if it has a high, 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 low, or it has a, um, a, a higher, low, lower, high. So there, there, is, there is a, a way you can actually study uh, uh, market structure, pattern structure. In a very quantified way, I'm not talking about Elliott waves. I'm not talking about uh, Gartley patterns. I'm just, you know, the, I'm talking about something that's very uh, science based. Wow, wow. And once that, that's that's my yes. uh, market structure. Once I've got that, then I go to momentum. And my cho tool of choice is the MACDV, like I mentioned, that I got the two awards for. And um, then I see momentum, whether the market basically is going fast, whether it's going slow. Uh, there are eight stages in the momentum life cycle. Again, which means that everything is very uh, systematic, very... Uh, if someone understands the methodology, which is not that difficult, the difficult part is applying it. Yeah. Uh, so it's not the information, it's the implementation that is difficult. But my, my, my this starting point is to give a framework so i don't know how many participants there are in the webinar right now but ideally if everyone has um studied everyone should come up with the same different answer on what the market is doing okay that's really interesting so it's like if it's either it's there or not Yes, there are there are of course discretionary uh, parts to it. Whether you will take the trade, whether it's uh, uh, because you can go into procedure what I call trade grade, and not all trades are created the same. For example, yeah. um, going back to the market structure, if for example the um, long term trend is down, medium trend is down, but then you see the short term trend going up. That's a different risk profile of a trade than a trade that is long term trend up, medium trend but short-term trend down. Basically, it's a retracement. So yeah. you may have good macro on both, but this is different because it's got the trend with it. So it has a different uh, trade grade, to put it this way. Okay. Yep. I understand. And just for people, maybe they are not familiar with the Dow theory and uh, when we talk about um, long-term, intermediate-term or near-term trend, uh, can you clarify what sort of time uh, time horizon you consider yes uh, that's a that's a good question well basically um each time frame has three different trends in it and when i say trends i don't mean five minute chart 10 minute chart or the hourly chart let's just focus on one particular time frame that can be the five minute chart or it can be the daily or the monthly it's it doesn't really matter so let's focus on my my operative the daily chart now the daily chart, you can have short-term swings, you can have intermediate-term swings, which are comprised of short-term swings, and then you can have a long-term swing, which comprised 
both of the intermediate and the short term. So these are the long, intermediate, and short term uh, trends within this particular time frame. And you can take this structure and apply it to other time frames as well. But uh, I'm just giving you the example of how it works in one particular time frame. Now, three time frames, eight different combinations. Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, it's really, really interesting what you described so far. And um, I'm sure in the next webinars, we're going to try to uh, go through some chart analysis so you can show us a bit more of your uh, of your trading setups. Uh, we have about uh, five minutes left before we start with the question. So let's talk a little bit about smart trader systems. Uh, you are the, uh, the owner of the smart trader system, right? Yep. Absolutely. Uh, can you let us know what is it about and how a retail trader can use it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, basically, um, I will be uh, launching the, uh, the, uh, the service, the company, in a little while. But these uh, techniques have been in existence for many years. Well, my primary uh, focus will be institutional investors, but I will be also open to um, private investors as well. Now, smart trader systems, as, as I mentioned, to, to understand the name and what it actually means, smart is because it's an acronym from the five stages of trader development, and it focuses on training, support, and development, all right? Okay. Um, but each of these has to be systematized. So the training has to become so come from a, a very particular training path, which I showed you before. The support also has to be systematized. There has to be structures and procedures in the terms of, um, for example, like trader drills, or it has to be uh, Q&As, or it has to be, there, there are certain panels that has, someone has to follow in order to progress from one module to the next. Um, okay. And the reason is I'm planning to launch, like, uh, to launch it in this fashion is to prevent people from binge drinking like it's Netflix. So I'll watch the first step and then go to step number three, because I've always learned, wanted to learn about this. Ah, step nine uh, uh, it seems also very interesting. No, it has to be learned in a particular order. Mm -hmm. And of course, development is because once you've got that and then you go into live markets and then you try to um, gain some confidence, over time, uh, and I'm talking about probably more than a year after having learned the basics, you want to be adding tools to your um, to your to adding your skill, enhancing your skill set. So basically, it's a lifelong learning process. As I see, it. even for, for even for myself, I consider myself uh, an, a forever student of the market, and I'm always learning. I'm just I found the platform to share my uh, the little things I know about markets. Awesome, awesome. I will share uh, on the chat box later your website so people can uh, can find you and and see what this is about although we have to let people know that it's under development yeah. right now so there are no information it's just for their reference to keep it and come back to it when it's ready um so uh another another question that um uh, maybe people are, are are wondering so how much time do you spend uh watching the markets and do this analysis you said you uh, have about 55 markets on your screen and uh, you choose of course uh, which one you're gonna um, uh, you're gonna interact with based on how do they implement all these procedures uh, how much time does it takes you to go through uh, on a daily basis to to scan the markets and see if you can find your setups oh good question well because I... sorry because someone listen to us now maybe he thinks or she thinks that uh 24 hours it's not enough you know because we don't use the chart yeah. to show the examples yes absolutely no well basically what i have uh program uh screeners okay so they can pinpoint me to do the most of the hard work for me 
Mm-hmm. So once I've got a, a, mar- a range of markets or patterns or setups that I have to look, then I go into these. So most of the day I spend it researching, either anal- doing analysis, analysis, analyzing markets or trying to research new techniques. Um, I can tell you that the, um, probably the smallest part of my day is actually trading, just trade entries. Because once I find something, I, I, I go into my broker and then uh, insert my orders, which are usually um, limit buy, limit sell orders. And then, you know, market orders would to, to get out. So the execution part is really, really, it doesn't take them more than a few minutes. Okay. So uh, usually you place limit orders, not stop orders or um, to go on a breakout. Or... Yeah. So if, if it's, if it's usually, yeah, usually it can be both. Sometimes it limits, sometimes it's uh, stop orders, depending on the occasion. Okay, but what I can tell you is that I, it's usually I go out on a market order when it's uh, time to get out. Okay, also, also, I think at this uh, point I will start asking you the questions, <laughs> guys. Please write down the questions. Uh, we're gonna spend some time, all the time left actually, to answer them. So. Arturo, good afternoon to you and Alex, ready to listen and ask questions. So, Alex, in the COT report, the non-commercials are the real smart money and trend followers, question marks. Uh, Well, non-commercials are basically the speculators, large speculators, because speculators come in either two forms, large small speculators or small speculators. Yes. You and I would come in the category of small speculators. Mm-hmm. Large speculators are usually by and large trend following. So they do not follow, they they follow trends. They don't do too much uh, macro analysis. So I'm not sure if they would, can be classified smart in the sense that they have some kind of um, superior forecasting uh, power, but they are smart in other ways, in the sense that like they diversify across portfolio, uh, across markets. They may diversify across time frames, so they have very smart um, uh, position sizing, portfolio construction techniques. So they their smartness in anyone else. So, but their trade entry uh, is, I would say. Sometimes it can be classified as ridiculously simple. It can be even something as simple as a moving average breakout. But how they do it is it's you know um, uh, it's it's different. I mean they they, they, they at, at these levels they don't so much fuss about the entries, but so yeah. much you know the position management, portfolio construction, and so forth. Awesome, awesome. Uh, another question from Kaido. What kind of strategies would you recommend it for beginner trader? Which technical instruments, RSI, MACD, ATR, etc.? Right, there are. What kind of Parts strategies? Of it. Yeah, which kind of strategy would you recommend? Well, basically, there are four types of strategies, what they call the 4R framework. And usually I, for beginners, in order to build uh, capital and more importantly, not just financial capital, but also emotional capital, mm-hmm. I would start with, I would recommend to start with strategies that are, have a high probability, higher probability of uh, success, for example, something like trading pullbacks. Mm-hmm. Now, because that will help them uh, both emotionally and, you know, and financially. Now, different strategies have different risk-reward profiles. Uh, coming back to the previous question, trying to tie it up with this one, yes. trend following, which is not what non-commercial large traders do, um, has a completely different risk-reward to a, a, a retrace, to someone who trades pullbacks. Trend following has a very low success rate, more, no more than 30, 35, 40% at the best. But when they catch a move, it goes really their way. I don't 
think a beginner or any or t- retail trader can have the emotional capital to sustain being wrong 60 or 70 percent of the time so they need something a, a different strategy now so I, w- I would suggest that someone starts with simple strategies like <coughs> sorry trading pullbacks but the important point is not just that someone would trade uh some a simple strategy like that but also to trade it on a demo account i know this is not what people would like to hear and some may dismiss it as not being the real thing my reply to that would be you get 80 percent of the experience with zero percent of the risk Mm -hmm. so it's not just what strategy to trade but more importantly how to trade it in the sense of um uh, of a demo account and of course you also need someone to tell you what you did wrong you may read it in a book but page 58 will not tell you what you did wrong you need the the, the critical feedback mm-hmm. um, that's that would be my my uh, import that would be my answer and of course also combine it with you know fundamentals and and so on and so forth now the, i think there was another question which technical instruments yes uh, right now I think to tell you the truth, the the landscape of technical analysis, there are probably more indicators than traders. Yeah. The, and the, the the problem is how to correctly create, a, and I'll use a Greek word, a taxonomy or a classification of where each tool comes in. And that's where my, my MACDV came in, by observing the, the, at least as far as momentum is concerned, the indicators you use. So, you have one indicator for trend, one for, I use swing charts. For momentum, I use one, the MACDV and the and the histogram. For volatility, I have volatility valuation. I have my um I have my own set of tools. You can also use, of course, Bollinger bands, you can use average to range. And then um you've got also relative ranking. There are many tools to use. But the thing is, the important thing is to understand is use one tool for each type of job you're doing. I see many, many charts and I mean, go like, oh, that's that, you know, someone's loser. In the sense that you know, they use uh, the RSI and then on top of the stochastic oscillator and then the CCI, guys, they're all singing the same song. They're all saying the same thing. There's absolutely no difference in using one. Use just one and learn how to um, use it properly. Uh, you know what? I'm sure the people, they're going to have the... Uh, they're gonna they're gonna give a gift to themselves, not only to be here, but to rewatch what you said on this webinar. And thank you so much for bringing so so much value because you speak from absolute experience, and everyone can feel that. Okay, so hey, that's uh, uh, so. I just I just want to be basically I want to be uh, sharing what I have done. There's you know there's there's no I don't lose anything by just yeah. sharing what I've learned, the little things I know about markets. Uh, guys, there are so many questions. I try, let's try to answer as many as possible. So let's move on. Where can we, uh, very fast, where can we get the business cycle sentiment and seasonality data or charts? Thank you. Uh, well, I have created templates, which I will be bringing onto trading view very soon. So the you have or you can program them yourselves of course depending on the indicator commitment of traders report it's it's freely available you can get it on the cftc website uh business cycle of course it depends on how you define the business cycle i've uh, used a framework pre-existing framework which i've tried to improve but to come back to your question i will be bringing this through on uh, trading view so that would be a um you know the, sh- the short answer for that um, awesome so you're going to let us know here at Admirals and we're going to pass it on to all of our clients. Absolutely. And so do you know, I know that's another question. So do you trade on trading view or meta trader? Question mark. I don't know. Well, um, or in none of them, <laughs> none of them. Uh, let's just put it this way. Cause I'm, I'm, I, I, I agreed with none of them. I, I think, Trading view is a, it's a very good platform for charting. I don't use it for trade. I use I use a different platform. Um, 
Admiral uh, is also a, a very good broker, so I think you know it's it's a quite reputable, and people can uh, stick with it. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Um, how do you determine the strongest and the weakest asset class? Can you show us an example? Yeah, re relative strength. Yeah, there are, there are many ways to do it. Each one has its pros and cons. Um, you can use one way to use it, for example, to see what the strongest asset class. Okay, I'll give you an, uh, a very uh, innovative use you, of uh, how you can do it. Not many people use it. I'm just saying the best, but one is, for example, because it's, it's a very easily accessible tool. You can use the RSI. We use a, a setting of, of a very long term one, like uh, RSI 100. You can see which market has the highest rating. Another one would be, uh, which I prefer is even much better, use a volatility normalized rate of change, which basically see what is the rate of change of a market in a particular time frame, say a rate of change like 200, 50. Um, and then normalize it by its volatility. Uh, or you can use my own relative ranker, which I will bring in fourth, um, which tries to combine many pieces under one one indicator. Um, I hope I okay. give any of these three solutions that you can use. There are many, many more you can use. I mean, it's um, the the. I think the main important thing is to stick with one, and exactly. also learn its ins and outs. Okay, because time really presses us, but. Uh, Alex, honestly, these are very interesting questions. So let's see if we can answer all of them. Do you use smart money concept in your trading? And what do you think about this approach? Um, like the smart money concept we, we see on the YouTube, like people, they come with order blocks and try to find the candle sticks. Smart money concept, I'm not sure. Candlesticks, yeah. I, I do not. Use I think they are very abused as a as a technique. It's basically if you go back to the uh, training path, it's at the top of its stamp. Uh, candlesticks come at the very top. It's as an entry technique. It's not the setup technique. It's not something that will. Um, it, it's just for signal generation. So I, I think people uh, abuse candlesticks in the sense that oh this X Y Z pattern has appeared. Can I? You know, I'll take the trade just because. No, that's just telling you to go in, but you have to look at the underlying structure. If that, if I understand the uh, the question correctly, because I'm not familiar with what is the definition of smart money concept. Maybe it is something that I know uh, by, that goes by a different name. Exactly, exactly. Um, so pretty much the the way they present it on on the YouTube, as far as I uh, investigated a little bit about this, is they use order blocks like. There is an import, there is a trend, and they take the last candle prior to the trend. And let's say that uh, hides the high, the, the highest amount of orders, and then they scale down to uh, the time frames in one minute, 30 seconds, and so on, and try to find uh, accurate entry points. With that stop. Yeah, well, the thing is, if, if yeah. my advice with this one would be the same, I would, I would use for my material as well, test it. Yep. Exactly. Trust, but verify. So if you uh, have a, a technique that you seem kind of makes logic, and I'm just telling from experience, a lot of things that I thought made logic, but they were practically useless, um, test it. I think that's the best thing. You, 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 you know, back test them, basically. Because A, you will learn if they work, and B, you will learn how well they work, and also in which market they work. Yep. Because you may have the same pattern, the same system, the same setup, uh, applied across each different market, and you will find that in some it works, and some it doesn't. And some it works really well, and some it works in a mediocre way. So that's why I prefer the semi-systematic uh, uh, framework. Okay. So um, coming back to the smart money concept, you know, backtest it and see if it yeah. works. Don't take my word or anyone else's word. Okay. Awesome. So, how many trades do you take on a weekly basis? On a weekly, none. I only, I mean, uh, sorry, I mean, you, you weekly time frame or not the weekly time frame? No, no, no. Uh, well, it depends on how many markets are set up. And usually, I would say probably two or three, sometimes five. But I think that that's it. I'm not hugely, hugely active because I really wait for the market to set up. So that would be, um, that would be 
my the number of okay. trades I talk on a weekly on a weekly basis. What are the most we have? I think another six minutes left. What are the four or five most important intermarket ratios like PSY and TL TL equities and bonds? Hmm. Oh, that's a very we can question. answer it very fast because I want to go to more questions. If yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, well, the, the four more interesting. I like that the uh, friend did the yeah, four. All right. Uh, well, it depends on which is the underlying, which is the market in question, because um, different markets have different uh, intermarket relations, which are more prominent. For example, for gold. There are different intermarket relationships. So you have to look at the dollar a lot. Also, you have to look at uh, uh, real interest rates, yeah? which is uh, inflation adjusted. That's uh, not just nominal. That's also a very big return driver for uh, for gold. When these go negative, then you go uh, gold, which is uh, in a better position. Uh, so the question has to be kind of like rephrased, which are the four most important for which asset class? Because they're not the same. You cannot use the same relationships to trade equities and bonds. Okay. I uh, hope Arturo that satisfies you. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, that for example, for um, let's just say okay, for let's say let's let's pick equities. For equities, I would see the relationships of uh, short-term interest rates. I would go into the yield curve. It's you know, long versus short. You can also look at intermarket relationships of uh, various commodities because this may also affect from an inflation point of view. Um, you can look at uh, sector rotation, uh, which because during in the business cycle, because you got different markets sectors, market sectors in terms of like commodities going in the reflation side uh, up until the big, the basically the market uh, the uh, business cycle begins and then it ends. So you may have the market, as they say, move, but there is a lot of sector rotation going under the hood. So you can use these sectors and use them as intermarket ratios and see, you know, some may move um, to different stages. Uh, for example, energy usually is like as a, is a late stage uh, uh, market. Awesome, awesome. Uh, due to the time pressure, really, I will pick the last question. Guys, apologies if we don't um, answer your question, but uh, we really appreciate that you have that enormous interest. And I'm sure Alex will be with us for more sessions, of course, uh, more market analysis. So the last question, um, what would what would be an what will be a realistic daily or monthly target? Let's say that monthly target, because on you are not an intraday trader, so we're not going to have a daily target, right? Let's say a monthly target as a percentage of a profit. For example, 5% of total capital profit in a month, 10%, 14% for a professional trader. You mean as, as a you mean from, from a performance point? That's what I understand. Yeah, as a profit. So what will be the realistic monthly target in terms of percentage? Well, my first target is not to lose my money. <laughs> That's my yeah. first target. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, guys, I really don't have a target. I take what the market uh, gives me. I may have targets on my individual trades, but performance-wise, um, I do not have target. I can tell you, let me let me answer it a different way. I do. Maybe you go for two to one or three to one, one to one. Why ah, you trade? So maybe. all right. So we're going about. So we're going on. On a on a trade by trade basis. Yeah, because on you said volume. that to maybe I'm not my monthly target. It's a bit. Um, it it right. not, doesn't depends on on the trader. Yeah. All right. Let let me put it away. So if because there are there are two ways to interpret it. Your targets like if they're on a per performance basis at the end of the month, okay, how much money you're, you need to make. The question is, I don't, and I really don't have to, my only target is that I don't lose my head to yep. keep my uh, my stops and also my, uh, basically keep my, my risk management so I can live to fight another day. The more I make, the better it is. But the main point, that, that that's what I focus on, risk management. Yep. So I really don't have like, say, okay, make five, 
So because you may may do more. If you're in a role, what will you do? Stop trading. Actually, you don't want to do that. So if yeah. you come on a trade by trade basis, I tell you what I do not do. I do not go on the oh you should trade on a one to three basis. That's a myth because you don't know how much the market move will be. So you yeah. have that with a market. So um, if or, okay, that's a that's a big topic. So if you so you you place your stop, and there are different ways to exit either based volatility based or you can use a target but it's not it, it's not based on the it's based on market action market structure is not how much i would like to make exactly. i want to make three to one i want to make two to one the market doesn't have to go through I mean, it might actually uh, give me less and plus this because sometimes i see it with people on the chart say okay this is a don't take a three to one trade but okay, so how do you know the market will move there? Exactly. You calculate three. How, how do you calculate one? It's a bit of a, it's a myth. It's exactly. a very useful statistic, but not after the trade is closed. For instance, say, evaluate how much uh, reward you had for your risk. But it's a post-mortem statistic. It's it's not something you can evaluate uh, beforehand. Okay. Also, uh, I think at this point, uh, we have to stop with the questions. Guys, if you want, and if you really, uh, we didn't answer your questions, again, apologies for that due to time pressure, because we have another webinar start after this one in a few minutes. So what I will do, I will share on the chat right now, Alex's website, it's uh, www.alexpiro.com. You will see that the website is under construction. So uh, be patient. I don't know, Alex, if it's uh, ah, there is a subscribe I can see here, so maybe they can, yeah, they can subscribe they can, and they can get information. Uh, if, they, if they want to uh, join, they become on the waiting list. I'm not going to be you know, spamming or anyone like that. Okay, they, awesome. Basically, awesome. just get on the announcement list. Okay, awesome. So, ladies and gentlemen, Alex, it was really a privilege in order to have you on, uh, on the webinar today. I'm Last sure... Word. Every one of us found this extremely valuable and satisfied. Already um, very positive feedbacks from people they watch the webinar. Feel free to leave your comments after we uh, we stop the webinar. Uh, of course, every feedback is anonymous, so don't worry about that. Now, uh, again, one more time, Alex, really thank you so much for your time and for your valuable knowledge and information that you shared with us. And we will look forward to have you in another call with us as well. Absolutely. Thank you so much, uh, Theo, and uh, also Admiral Markets. It was a pleasure, honor uh, to be here. You, I, like, I enjoyed the questions, both from the audience and especially from you. And I hope I'll be seeing you around. Absolutely, absolutely. So, ladies and gentlemen, from myself, from here, from us here at Admirals, we would like to wish you to have a lovely evening wherever you are in the world. And I will be looking forward to see you tomorrow on the live trading web on the live trading session at the 7:30 GMT. Thank you so much and have a good night. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye.